Alright guys, now we are back in the bilingual studios and yeah, I have to admit that I was actually quite surprised how it turned out today. I really thought, yeah, there won't be that many deals, but we actually got around, I think, 10 to 15 cards I can show you now. And yeah, obviously there are deals because I bought them, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I didn't really expect that and um, I'm really happy that I was at least able to find these. And of course we bought the uh, Game Boy game as well. And yeah, the only unfortunate thing which happened was that Card Shop Magi was actually closed, which is just, yeah, very, very unfortunate because I was actually so looking forward to go there. But yeah, we can't change it and um, yeah, never go to Akihabara on Fridays. That's my new, uh, my new motto, uh, the thing I learned from today. And yeah, let's uh, have a look at what I bought here and yeah, I will keep you guys informed about what else I got in the mail today because there was one other item I got in the mail and yeah I will show that to you as well. Alright guys then let's have a look at what we bought today and uh, yeah you can already see a very cool blue eyes white dragon here. Alright so yeah since I showed you the blue eyes already let's have a look at the blue eyes first here guys. Um, this blue eyes right here is actually the, uh, the one from the EX deck from 1999. It's the very first deck um, after the starter box and uh, yeah the first version of the blue eyes does not have a set number so this is the way more expensive one here and I think I paid around 30 euro for this guy and uh, in terms of grading I would say he is yeah close to near mint, near mint minus maybe um, but very very clean a little off center here on the back unfortunately but um, that's quite normal for these old cards here and yeah I mean honestly near mid would be fine as well you can see no whitening on the corners a little bit of silvering here down there in the corner as you can see but very very clean and 30 bucks I think is a really really good price for this card because if you order this card online from uh, for example card rush or other card stores uh, this card here got very expensive i think you pay at least around 70 euros for this card as of uh, 2022 so yeah i think this is a very very cool card a very good deal and yeah i got myself a very clean blue eyes white dragon today all right next up we have a very very special card here um, if you do not know this card guys i mean you will probably know this card from the mcdonald's pack i guess but um, in the OCG we did not have McDonald's packs, we had this in the limited edition one. And the limited edition one is the, yeah, it basically consists out of three booster packs. Um, I can show you this card as well because this is also a limited edition one card. And there was a Yugi pack, a Joy pack and a Kaiba pack. And each of these packs goes uh, for around 500 to 700 bucks. So these are by far the most expensive booster packs. Uh, you can ever buy in the whole OCG. There is nothing coming close to uh, these three booster packs. I think the premium pack 2 would be uh, the second most expensive if you count the limited edition as one big booster pack series. But um, yeah, premium pack 2 around 250 euro, but a limited edition at least twice the price. So these are very, very expensive. Uh, limited edition is also a pack where you always got the same cards so if you open a limited edition Yugi you will always get the same cards out of it and from these limited edition we have now two cards here the first one is Kuiguremi don't know the English name but um, this is how the card looks like and as you can see there's a secret rare lettering here on the on the on the top here for the name but the holofoil here is a regular holofoil so it's not a secret rare and this rarity right here is called Ultra Secret Rare here in Japan. And yeah, this is uh, one of the few cases where they actually made these, but this rarity itself is very, very special. So um, these are very, very nice and very, very collectible and also very sought after. And uh, yeah, this card actually pretty, pretty clean. Um, for my grading, I would say near mint minus. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's a really minty card. And yeah, this card is also a very, very expensive card. And yeah, you won't see that 
that often here in Japan, it's a really, really rare card as well. All right, and the other one here is Yamadorang. Yamadorang, again, same rarity. We have the uh, ultra secret rare. And as you can see, this card has a little bit more damage to it. You can see, yeah, the silver ring is unfortunate, but that's basically out of the pack. But it has some more scratches here, especially uh, on the hollow foil, as you can see, maybe right here. Yeah, it has a little bit more damage. So I would, would really say this card is uh, excellent. But um, even though this card is excellent here in the back, there's also something. Um, these cards are very, very collectible and people love these. And uh, you can definitely count me and I really love this as well. And yeah, at some point I want to get some of these in PSA 9 quality. That would be awesome. And yeah, for all the very old Japanese cards, PSA 9 is pretty much as far as you can get in terms of grading. And yeah, these are our first three cards. Sorry for the little bump here. And let's continue with another very, very cool card here. And I have here for you another Ultra Secret Rare. This time not from the limited edition though. This time we have the Flame Swordsman from the Starter Book. So uh, the Starter Book basically was the very, very first rule book in the OCG. And there, there was a promo included, like with the variable books, there's also always a promo inside. And yeah, for the Starter Book, it was actually this Flame Swordsman here. And yeah. This card also ultra secret, very, very unique rarity. And yeah, I got this here in condition, I would say maybe excellent, maybe excellent plus, definitely not the worst. And yeah, it has a few scratches, but uh, all in all, it's pretty clean. So I would say excellent plus. And yeah, this is also a very, very epic card, guys. Um, I think we got this artwork in the TCG at some point as well, but this is the OG, guys. This is from 1999, so very, very old, 25 years. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, it's just a gorgeous card, guys. All right. Um, since I do not know what I actually paid for these, um, I will just, yeah, as you have already seen, probably there will just be something in the video for you guys to give you like an idea about how much these cards cost. And yeah, let's continue with a few cards here. And um, these are <laughs> very, very loved cards by me. These are vanilla cards because yeah, they are obviously vanillas. But um, where are these from? And maybe let's start with this random tree here. Uh, you might not have seen before. And this tree is, I think, not printed in the TCG or maybe in some uh, tournament pack only. And this is from the starter box. So this is the very, very first Yu-Gi-Oh product ever released. There was a deck and there was also the very first Blue Eyes released. And in that deck, one of the commons, one of the 40 commons, you were able to get this tree. <laughs> And yeah, these are uh, basically not reprinted anywhere, so you can only get them from the very old package. And that's why these are very collectible and very, very unique. And yeah, for her here, uh, she is called Queens of Autumn Leaf, I think. Um, it's just a stunning artwork. I really, really like it. And um, yeah, I mean, she is a tournament pack one common, I think, in the TCG. And yeah, crazy expensive for that reason. And here in Japan, of course, these are still expensive. I think you, yeah, I would definitely charge you at least 20 bucks for her because she is actually near mint and uh, getting these booster series comments in near mint is very, very hard, but um, yeah, 20 bucks at least, but still a lot cheaper than if you would buy the counterpart in the TCG. And it's basically the same artwork and with this awesome uh, gen one Japanese layout, it's, it's perfect guys, it's perfect. And yeah, let's put her aside and let's get back to the starter box again, because here the uh, Elzaim, she's also a card which was only included in the starter box. So the very, very first deck here. And yeah, she is also very, very gorgeous. And we will actually, uh, or not we, I will actually show you her little twin in a second here. But yeah, keep her in mind and we will come back to her in a second. And what I have here last for you guys, it's a magic card and it's actually a rare. As you can see in the lettering, it's just a rare. And you have to know this card is from volume one. So the very first booster pack ever released in Japan. And uh, rares from the volume series are indeed rare. <laughs> because um, I think there is four rares in the whole box out of 30 packs. So if you open a volume one pack, you are usually getting five commons and the rares are actually rare. <laughs> and uh, yeah, 
This is one of the rares and the condition was pretty pretty good so this will go straight into my own collection here because I didn't own this card before and yeah really happy that I was able to find this card here in today's card hunt and yeah check this out guys really really cool okay now I have two a little different cards here and uh, here we have some rule cards and these were included when you bought these booster series cards and by the way guys I'm talking about booster series and I'm talking about volume series so uh, just to make you a quick example these two cards are from completely different yeah packs or machines basically the booster series cards with uh, she's one of them and uh, by the way you cannot tell from the looks of the card that this is a booster series card and this is a volume card because both just don't have any set number but um, yeah the booster series card you were able to get from uh, vending machines and when you bought these uh, you were you had a chance i think or you always got some of these rule cards here because on the back here there is also some rules written down and uh, yes that's the that's one of these and i think i didn't have may yet so yeah i purchased this and uh, this one here is always a nice pickup i'm going to flip this on my store probably uh, for for a couple of bucks but um, yeah these are very nice uh, for your binders if you have like empty spaces you can just fill the spaces with these and it will just look very very nice and yeah these have a vintage touch to them which uh, makes it even nicer all right guys um, next card here um, yeah don't know the name unfortunately um, Oshirohiro is his uh, Japanese name and this card here is actually also a booster series card I think booster 2 or booster 3 so again a very very old card and these booster cards again very very expensive I think there is not a single booster card going for less than 10 euro um, at least when we are talking about very good conditions like excellent plus to near mint and yeah this is also one of them and I'm yeah always picking these up whenever I see them for a decent price these are very rare and people who actually collect them they yeah they actually know how rare these are and how hard they are to acquire because volume comments from the booster packs they, they are plentiful okay you can even open up boosters today even though i wouldn't recommend it because they are very expensive but you could technically open booster packs today and get the vanilla from the volume series but you cannot get these booster series cards and these booster series cards guys as you can see these are trash cards for play I think we can agree on that because there is just so many better options out there and nobody really collected these back in the days no nobody played these nobody bought these they were just there okay so not many people bought them and yeah that's why um, the print runs of these are not that high as well and yeah these are really really scarce so um, do not underestimate the rarity of the booster series cards guys there's a big difference between volume and booster series cards speaking of booster series cards here is another card here another example this is hellgate deke and i mean look at the artwork it's it's such a beautiful card i don't know if there is a tcg print but um, yeah these cards are very unique and even if the tcg would be printing them or yeah would print them in the next I don't know anniversary or something like that they wouldn't look retro right the card stock would be different and these are just the OG cards they look so good man they look so awesome and yeah that's why these are very expensive I think Hellgate Deke is easily a 20 or 30 euro card depending on the condition so yeah be aware of the booster series cards guys okay so we have now another card here um, maybe you know her um, Tsukiyaka Rinotome is her name so moonshine yeah girl <laughs> angel whatever I can't translate that and yeah she is basically uh, my twin for the album because yeah these are looking very very nice together and actually yeah what do you think guys could they be twins I mean um, from the looks I would definitely say yes and they both like moons it seems like and yeah very very awesome artworks just look how cool this frame actually looks here on the camera <laughs> nice I really like these old vanillas they are just something different and uh, now we are already at the very last card here and yeah we have something to change up the uh, flow of the of the opening here and yeah actually what I have here is a magic ruler card so this card here is uh, ultra parallel 
from a uh, magic ruler mr in the japanese as you can see it's not mrl it's mr and yeah these parallel rare cards guys are actually very very rare they are very hard to pull uh, i think you're not even guaranteed a parallel rare in a booster box and yeah this sacrifice here actually um yeah the condition i would say let's say yeah maybe excellent excellent to excellent plus something in between maybe more excellent these are just very very rare and this is actually the best pull you were able to get from uh, magic ruler in japan so yeah very cool card here there's also of course the ultra rare variant of this card which was for around 10 to 15 euro as of today and this card here if it would be near mint is easy a 100 euro card so yeah i was able to pick him up for around 20 bucks here so yeah really happy that i got him for that cheap and i will probably sell him on the stores so yeah if you're interested in any cards just let me know some are already claimed as of yeah we're recording the video already because yeah people who have access to my whatsapp community group are just the very first to get to know any new cards which i have in my store but yeah this is basically all i had for you in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and yeah then there was one final purchase which is this uh Pokemon Red original version here from 1997, 8? Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, I bought this for myself as a little Christmas gift here. And yeah, this is not sealed, guys. This is just sealed uh, from the store. It was selling it. Um, I don't even know if there is any sealed uh, yeah Pokemon games out there. And uh, yeah, this is just an awesome pickup. I really like to display these. These just look so retro, so nice, and um, yeah, I got this, I got this for, as a little treat for myself, and yeah, I really hope you enjoyed today's video, guys, and it is also the last video of 2022, and therefore, guys, I am wishing you a very, very nice rutsch in the new year, uh, like the Germans say, and yeah, let's meet ourselves again in 2023. Uh, thank you everyone for supporting the channel that we are able to hit 800 subscribers is really really crazy and yeah i just cannot thank you guys enough and yeah really happy to see you all back in 2023 stay healthy guys and see you very very soon your bilingual duelist ciao